I think we're live. We are live. So it's always exciting when in today's day and age you can talk to people. I'm in Costa Rica. John's out in the middle of nowhere near Petawawa. And uh, not too far down the road in the beautiful downtown area of Nepean, which is part of Ottawa, we have mm -hmm. the uh, one and only, uh, same haircut as John. True. <laughs> Get that special. Robin Spencer. So uh, we've had Robin on before. I know I've interviewed you a few times, Robin, over the years. And uh, I think, I think, did we not have you uh, speak at one of our live events at one time? We're going back in history. Um, no, uh, I, I haven't. I was looking forward to them. Uh, I was up in Sudbury doing a talk to your branch there years ago. Uh -huh. but no, not a, not a, not a year. I think event. you did. I think you, I think your memory fails you. I think you did. Could be. But I'm not going to arm wrestle with you on that one because no. uh, you might well, quite leave your own. And it's Dave, right? <laughs> <laughs> so for those who don't know Robin, uh, Robin's been a friend and a friend of the industry for decades. I've known him probably since the late '80s when I first joined the PPOC. He was very active. Robin's always been a uh, very um, down to earth, uh, sort of, um, I use the word irreverent, meaning he doesn't take himself or the industry too serious. Yeah, and that comes, probably. Through, that comes through in your personality, your persona, and mostly in your marketing. Uh, I know, I know we had you uh, speak at one time about 20 years ago or 18 years ago or so on one of our webinars, and we dug deep, I believe, into uh, some of your marketing. Yeah, some of the funniest uh, articles, and uh, it's still there. I can see it's still there, and it's just sort of oh. evolved. But the main point is is that you're still in the game. You're probably about the same age as I am, somewhere in the mid 60s, 60 plus range, where most people are thinking about retiring, and um, you're still going strong. So, yep, still going strong. You know, it's been 42 years, 42 years full time. Right. And I take a lot right. of pride in that. Full time, uh, like unlike every other photographer around here, I don't mm -hmm. drive an Uber. I don't have to get a part-time job driving a school bus. It's photography, 100% income uh, mm -hmm. for 42 years. If I was smart, I'd be retiring. Um, you still love it. I love it. You you it. Know? But the funny thing, and we'll probably get into this, it's not. It, it's taken me 42 years to realize it's not the photography I love. You know, mm -hmm. it's not the obsession with cameras and lighting and all that. You know, you have to know that stuff. It's the people I deal with. And, and I know right. it sounds really cliche, but we it do does. shoots and, and, you know, I'm laughing and we're joking and just having a great time. And, and, uh, yeah. and, and that's the secret, you know, it's not F8 and B there. It's, you know, get a real smile, get repeat customers, get referrals, get reviews, mm -hmm. um, all the stuff they don't teach you in photography school, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's fair to say that you're a people person, although, you know, a lot of people would disagree with that. Well, think, no, you're right. You're, but, you know, to my customers, I'm a people person. A lot of people in the industry, you're right, would definitely disagree with that. I, I, <laughs> I won't mention names, but I was uh, called by the, uh, by the president. Yeah. President of the PPOC <laughs> referred to me as a menace to the industry. <laughs> because, uh, no, listen, I, I did a whole speaking tour based on that. Uh -huh. I went through and just, you know, and, it, it, you know, stuff like that. You know, you have to sort of uh, take the lemons and make lemonade, as they say, right? Mm -hmm. so, and, and that happens all the time in this business. Bad stuff happens. And if you're smart, you turn it to your advantage somehow. Yeah. So uh, before we get deep into other stuff, I got a bunch of questions. I just wanted to sit on that one for one second. What is it since day one up till now that it, you you were you had such a problem with that you would actually <laughs> make that the theme of your presentation in uh, going back a few decades. What is it about the industry or the association? Oh, yeah, well, the wrong way. Listen, we're it's, you were only on for an hour, right? Yeah, um, I know. Well, so I'm giving you one or minute and a half to. Uh, um, I guess two main things, two main topics: uh, the associations. Uh, they don't. They don't have their members' best interest at heart. There's other things mm -hmm. involved. Um, I was a big fan for a long time until I started seeing certain things, and um, yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons I'm 
I was referred to as a menace to the industry and told, yeah, uh, when I quit, they said, don't bother rejoining. Um, <laughs> because I think there's, uh, my heart is with the professional photographers and theirs is with the trade and, you know, and building membership, even if it's a crap membership. And I say, no, it's professional photographers. That's what the association's for. That's who I want to back. Uh, and the other thing is photographers in general, um, and I probably said this before, photographers in general, the whole, the whole point of our existence is copying stuff. It's not being artistic. It's not being creative. It's, you know, Rob comes up with a, with, with a great posing idea, and then all of a sudden you'll see that in every photographer's website. What's killing me is that I come up with a really great slogan, um, and within an hour, half the photographers are, have stolen my slogan. Um, I mean, I do all the work to, you know, uh, I've been to night school, went to night school for four years to study marketing. Rob, you know, I've read basically every book there ever was on marketing as you have, and I do the work and then immediately it, you know, all of my, my ideas yeah. are stolen. And so I have very little respect for certain photographers. That's, is that my yeah. net math? <laughs> that's good. That's good. It's a very valid point, and uh, uh, but I've I've always felt that uh, if you're pushing marketing, if you're pushing uh, new ideas, promotions, concepts, that the originator is the one who gets ninety percent of the gravitas and uh, uh, momentum. Copying, and this is a good lesson for anybody who's like thinking about copying. You look like a cheap replica of the authentic original version of it so it's okay to swipe a concept or a pose or whatnot and make it your own i mean that happens with music all the time so and musicians and uh, nothing new under the sun but i get what you're, I get what you're saying yeah. but before we go down that rabbit hole let's talk about your coffee mug can you show it to us oh. <laughs> i liked it let's see if i can get this center. there we are 500 five-star reviews. Let's talk about that and get sort of into the marketing. I want to talk to you about what you're, and this will probably lead to what you've been up to these days. You sound like you're very busy and you know, really enjoying life and uh, uh, earning a decent living, doing what you love. Taking pictures. My God, that's no way to earn a living. Uh, tell us a bit the the 500 reviews. Um, it, you know, Rob, it was, how should I put it? We usually... At the beginning, we're looking for awards and get your master's and all that stuff. And I've done all that. Uh, then we're looking at, you know, getting money in the bank and everything. And I'd set a goal out for myself a couple years ago to hit, I think it was 300 reviews, 300 five-star reviews. Uh, and I did. So I bought myself a little gift in, in celebration because I didn't do it the first year. And the next year was 400. And then nice. um, December of last year i had hit 500 i think i'm now up to it says on the website 511 but i think i'm up to 530 something that's cool but the reviews are sort of beyond the reviews like it's not just gee i got 500 and whatever reviews uh not all of them are five star i do have i think about nine four star so um, good yeah it's not bad eh? um that's good that's a good know, with the reviews it's what they say in the reviews that really worked for me and i put it on one of my web pages that i always thought that hey i'm a good photographer people are going to love my photos and that's it but that wasn't it uh yes people love the photos they said in the review but it was and again something you won't hear in photography school um uh, you know robin's funny he makes me feel relaxed i really didn't i hate getting my picture taken but robin made me feel comfortable and i really enjoyed it and that's the way I started marketing my business for the last couple of years it is not so much great photographs. And I do have all the credentials for that, mm -hmm. but it's that I make people feel comfortable, relaxed. And it's just, it's, it's a fun experience instead of like going to the dentist for a root canal, as they say, you know? Yeah. Um, so I changed my marketing to, instead of saying, Hey, I'm the best photographer in Ottawa. It's more, I'm the funny one. I'm the easygoing yeah. one. I'm, you know, and, uh, and and I get a lot of comments almost every day. People saying, "You have great reviews," and it's not the five stars; it's what they say 
you know, that um, really gets me a lot of business. That's pretty cool. So getting those reviews says a lot. And uh, when you talk about those and you talk about that as a strategy and you talk about the characteristics and personality that you bring to the game, these are things that are near impossible to mimic for most people. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's going to make you stand out. But I want to ask you about this strategy of getting reviews. You obviously you set it as a goal, mm-hmm. right? And, and exactly. so there, let's go there for a second. What specific steps did you put into place to achieve that goal? Was there a plan or it was just like, well, let's just hope they go and review me? Um, you must put something in place. How can I explain it? You know what? It's, it's just, uh, it, it honestly, it just my personality and the way I treat customers and the fact that I'm relaxed and uh, right. I, I don't, I don't offer, you know, free photos for grandma to give me a review. It's just, um, okay. I, I always ask when they leave, they always say, you know what? I had a great time. I thought it was going to be, you know, really, I thought I'd be really nervous, but I had a great time. I said, well, you know, I'd appreciate a nice review. All right. You That's know, all you got to say then, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because some people say, you know what? I'm going to give you a really great review and you get nothing. And other people, you don't hear anything. And all of a sudden you get this beautiful review. So I know uh, Maria Sampeo, which she talked about this a couple of years ago, and she has a very proactive uh, strategy in, in place where she sends them a follow up email and sends them to the Google uh, page yep. and asks them for reviews. Uh, but it's a great it's a great uh, marketing strategy. I mean, one of many many marketing strategies. And is this what you would consider at this point in time one of your top ten uh, strategies? And, and yeah. Any other? I mean, the the numbers. You know, first of all, when you get a bunch of uh, really great reviews, you slide up higher on the on the Google page on the Google listing page. Um, the number, you know, the average five-star reviews and, and and the quantity really helps what it, it is in there you know the wording really helps um most of I, i'm doing this from memory but i think 409 or 410 of those 500 comes from verified reviews which is different than google um it goes through the booking company i use the online booking company and when my my shoot is done 24 hours after the shoot they send an email and it basically oh, really? it says, you are recently at Spencer Studio. Would you like to review them? Um, the interesting thing is they because it's from actual customers I photographed, unlike we'll say Google, like I could get on there right now and and go to your website and uh, you know say, you know, Rob's a horrible horrible photographer. He tried to touch me inappropriately on Google. And on Google. <laughs> and and there there's nothing to stop me from doing that. Whereas verified reviews uh-huh. so verified customers you know yeah so you know it's all legit it's the first time i heard of that that concept yeah. there's actually a sort of a mechanism in place to uh weed yeah, out nonsense yep that's fascinating so um so tell us what you've been up to you before we went live you were saying that you're like slammed for the next three weeks three uh, yeah at least three weeks typically i i only take online bookings i don't really like to answer the phone stuff because i don't know how things are for you but it's usually telemarketing it's usually people trying to sell me services to upgrade my google you know um Mm -hmm. and it's so anyways everything i do is is basically online now um where what was the question again what do you get the way you're getting into details, but I'm. Yes. I mean, I want to get there, but I want to ask you what you've been up to. You've been, you've been busy. So, Give so, us an update on that. Uh, a couple things. I was mentioning that uh, this week we we did went to a local company. They had brought me in. I had photographed this guy apparently two or three years ago, not not knowing he was sort of a big shot in a particular company, a local company, um, and it was just a photo for LinkedIn. He loved the photo and everything. Here it is a couple of years later. He's now in a position and he's now looking for a photographer to photograph all of his staff. So I was in and we photographed uh, 42 staff members at $89 right. a pop. 
uh, and this morning I went through 850 proofs trying to get it down to the best six of each person. Uh, it was a big job. Um, the other huge thing I've been doing, though, since July 1st is grad photos. Um, the schools weren't doing them. You know, the, it's. I wish I could say that I was real smart and manipulated and did all this stuff. The fact is the school photographers weren't doing them because you can't shoot 200 students if they have to be six feet apart. Right. I only do one student at a time. So I can right. book them in, you know, at, at different times. Um, I've been doing, uh, we have three universities in Ottawa, Ottawa U, Carleton, and St. Paul's. We've mm -hmm. got Algonquin College, and we have, I don't know how many high schools, none of which were offering uh, grad photos for the last couple of years, but I'm offering them. So I was mm -hmm. shooting, uh, I'm really lazy. I, I was shooting three a day, six days a week. Uh, now I'm getting lazier. I only shoot two a day, but um, so we've got that. Uh, and recently I had to pay my HST bill. And honestly, Rob, I paid more than twice as much HST in the last quarter than I've ever paid ever in my life. So I've made, I made a lot of sales since July 1st until two weeks before Christmas when they shut us down again. Yeah. So I've been uh, busy doing grad photos, a lot of headshots, very, very few in the way of family portraits. Um, basically it's been, I mean, it's boring stuff, but uh, I shouldn't say yeah. it's boring, but I love what I do. I was going to say, but it's not, it's not exotic stuff. It's not, you know, fashion models on the beach or something. Better it's, word. Exotic. Uh -huh. um, but here's the thing. Uh, I'm really with you on this, you know, and I'm, I'm glad you're busy. And I want to go back to that in a second, because you mentioned something earlier offline. You said that COVID's been really, really good. It's been the best thing that's ever happened to you for obvious reasons. But mm -hmm. when you talk about it, the fact that what you really seem to enjoy most is the fact that you're dealing with people, you're working with people, and it's not exotic. Well, that's exactly, in my opinion, you can elaborate on this if you want, but this is exactly what we're talking about. This is not about photographing bikini glad babes and boudoir and all that exotic stuff which has got its time and place and all and uh or the sports not sports but the fitness uh stuff like john uh, used to shoot quite intensely um which i would categorize as exotic as well or you know exotic cars or whatever this is everyday bread and butter eyeball to eyeball working with people you're connecting with people so yeah um, in spite of the fact that it sounds mundane and but it's not really you still really are very passionate about it and you know, i get that totally i'll, I'll tell you it, it it it's the people and, and i'm not making this up and, and i know it's you know it sounds sort of cliche you gotta love your clients but i really do and mm -hmm. after a half hour you know they leave here we're laughing we're joking we're having a great time uh, I know the names of their kids. I, I know how old their kids are. I know that they have a dog. I know the name of the dog. I know where they go. You know, it, it's all this interpersonal stuff. Again, they don't teach you in photography school, right? Uh, yeah. Um, it, it's it, and on my on my page about studio marketing, uh, I had put that the best, absolute best book for photographers is um, how to win friends and influence uh, people, and it goes back to I don't know, twenty years or thirty years or something. Um, and that's, and it, like I said, it's taken me a lifetime to realize that, that it's that, that, uh, and, and that's, you know, the small talk and, and how to get them to relax and how to get the real smiles. And, you know, that's much more important than, you know, the histogram, mm -hmm. you know, yep. histogram. <laughs> well, if you're going to be studying one thing, it, you know, it better you be studying people than histograms. Yeah, that's a that's a good uh, headline for a blog title right there. I've already got two of them. I forget what the other one is, but uh, oh, um, masters versus reviews is one. Getting your masters versus getting reviews. That's a good blog title. A truism. How do we? Um, um, shit. When did you just say how to win friends and influence people? Is the name of the book. Anyways, the idea is there. I know what you're saying. 
So you mentioned that book. This is an old book, by the way, for anyone who's never heard of it. When was it written? In the 40s? I think it was earlier than that. I thought it was the 20s or 30s, but I'm not sure. Could be. But it, yeah, it was. I read that when I was a kid. You wouldn't know it. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, yeah, it, I've reread it a couple of times, and, and it's just, it's, it's basically on how to connect with people. And if somebody hasn't read it and they want to be a photographer, then it's certainly be a good starting point. But photographers, by nature, would much rather spend their money on a new wide angle lens, you yeah. know, than yeah. education on something that's not specific to photography. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they'll, they'll go to a course on lighting, uh, but offer a course on marketing or on, uh, you know, financial strategies for photographers. There's no one there. Years ago, I went down to um, to Detroit. They had a thing. They had a uh, a weekend workshop seminar on mm -hmm. finance. I think it was called something like financial studio management or something like that. And I couldn't believe this is Detroit. Uh, there was a dozen photographers at this thing. Uh, two left after half a day, but it was basically, really? you know, on how to fine tune your finances and how you project and how many, uh, how many weddings you do as compared to how many portraits and then the portraits, how many, you know, are for kids, how many are for engagement. Anyways, I was, I was the only Canadian there and, you know, had it been a course on, Hey, let's do boudoir photography and all the lighting, it would, the place would have been packed. You know, it just, Good but point. that's one of the secrets I think to being a business so long is my obsession with marketing and sales and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and dealing with people. It has very little to do, like I said, with histograms. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is good. So you've been busy, busy and uh, excited about, uh, uh, that state of affairs and, and I, I can remember being in my studio last fall, like late November or something. And I was just thinking about the whole year and I was thinking, man, isn't this something? I mean, all this money taking pictures. <laughs> it's yes. Yes. Very true. Pictures. <laughs> yep. It, it's, you know, and I, I tell people this, you know, I remember when I used to do weddings, I'd be driving home from a wedding and laughing in the car, just laughing. I can't believe they pay me for this. I can't mean, do it for free. No, I mean, I loved it, right? Yeah. Um, and, and yeah. you know, to find something you love to do and you can keep it going for 40 yep. years. Yeah. Well, that's a good, uh, let's segue into uh, weddings then, because I know John's just itching to get back into weddings. <laughs> you, you're used to shoot weddings. And uh, uh, the email I sent out to everybody today was one of the, uh, in your article you wrote, which I want to go to now and maybe bring up some of these points, you have this, uh, can, can we, can I show the page, uh, Robin? Let's see. Oh, oh, sure, please. Yeah. Uh, and I started putting this page together on studio marketing ideas or strategies or something mm -hmm. with no idea why I was doing it. I had no intention of doing seminars, um, not trying to sell a book, not trying to sell DVDs or anything. It was just, I wanted to put these ideas down. Um, the, the thing is, uh, usually when you do that, you get idiots that want to comment and, and uh, or question, you know, like, well, what do you mean by blah, blah, blah. And I really, like I said, I'm busy every day. And when I'm not busy, I'm doing family stuff. Um, so I put it up there and just said, here are some thoughts. They've obviously been working for me. Uh, right. I know I'm not taking any comments or, or suggestions. Mm -hmm. Do you got right. it there with you, Robbie? Yeah, let me show you that. Bum, bum, bum. Give me a second. I know what Give you're me. talking about, Robin, because uh, they are, what's that old saying? Find something you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. Okay. Occasionally, I get invited into high schools to talk to their business class or to talk to... Uh, there he is on the right-hand side. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I do kind of look like him, but much better looking. I was thinking... Jeez, Robin reminds me of Rob Reiner. In a sense. Yeah, that's it's a look. He's a lot older. It's, yeah, and I'm you're much really handsomer. All right. Yeah, that's it. Um, there you are here. Yeah, this, is my, this is my resume here. Yeah. Uh, again, 
you know, <laughs> I like a little alternative thinker just likes it. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, a little different than most. Every photographer starts out with, I got a camera as a child and I loved it, blah, blah. And I just thought, yeah, throw in this stuff. But yeah. I, I do have, uh, and I do have my official list of, you know, masters and craftsmen and viewers oh, yeah. choice awards and, yeah, and all that stuff, which I don't think anybody cares about. I always no. thought it was, I always thought it was the big thing, but, yeah. I'm know. probably not. I agree. And, and, and I, you know, this to me, is 10 times more valuable. Yeah. Embarrassingly bad dancer. You're making fun of yourself. Flower <laughs> child, traveler, fucking meditator, hitchhiker, class clown, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Oh, that people yep. relate to this. And, and, you know, and stuff that's not very complimentary, you know, like the fact that I failed grade five, you know, uh, I'm oh, dyslexic. Yeah. Um, How the hell did that happen? How do you fail grade five, by the way? And I, I <laughs> just, too. I too failed one semester in grade five, so we're in yeah. the same boat. I was I, I was dyslexic, and I didn't find that out until I was in my forties because they didn't invent dyslexia until the seventies or eighties. It got invented well, later. Right? It's in the eighties, I believe. When when I was a kid, uh, the teacher just told me I was stupid. Like they would tell you flat out that you know you're stupid, you're not trying. Uh, and I knew I couldn't be because of the stuff I was reading and the stuff I was interested in. They had actually one of the things I tell my girls is is at one point, uh, Ottawa Board of Education figured, hey, we got to do something to, uh, you know, justify our jobs, I guess. So let's give all the kids in school an IQ test. And apparently, I did extremely well on the IQ test. Um, and yeah, the teacher okay. told me it was really. Good. And then they still kept telling me I was stupid. Okay, um, they didn't tell you you were stupid. They just said he doesn't try. Is that no, they said I was stupid. All right. You have to remember a different time. They don't do that now. They but. used to, they used to tell my parents about me that he's a smart kid. He just doesn't try. And I was always failing. And grade five was the first time I failed on my report card. And I erased. I had this great idea. I would erase. You know the it was in pen, right? So I had a yeah. pen eraser, and I thought, oh, I'm going to lie to my parents. I erased it. I had a failing mark, and I put in added like twenty points to it. Nice. I got busted. Of course, you can't. You can't lie. Uh, how old were you when you read "Think and Grow"? I'm not "Think and Grow Rich." How to win yeah. friends and influence um, How old was I? Um, I'm guessing I was maybe 12 when I read it the first time. Uh, my You're father right. gave it. To, my father gave it to me. I think it was. I think he was re-gifting, and mm -hmm. obviously he didn't. He didn't read it, but um, he just uh, thought you were stupid, so he needed to yeah. you up. <laughs> It, maybe it worked. I read it when I was 17. So we, we have that in common, grade five in reading that book. So yeah, this is uh, this is to me a lot of personality and it really resonates with a lot of people. Uh, let's go to this list here. You, you all can see this, right? Yep. All right. So this is the uh, idea I took this morning when I sent the mass email. The best photography education you can get is from weddings, which is so, so true. Never thought of it that way, Robin. So good insights there. But can we get go back one step before we talk on that or uh, some of the other points and talk about this one here where you said automate everything you can. Obviously, this is something you've been putting into practice. You, you mentioned you don't like being on the phone. You've automated absolutely everything. Yeah, so. I am. Um, uh, you know, later in the in on that page, it talks about the eighty twenty thing, the whole eighty twenty rule, uh, and I found that automating things. Uh, I'm a photographer, and I'm a bit of a flake. I'm sure that's totally unique, right? Uh, but it, it helps me. It, it. I book appointments. They book appointments online. They immediately get a confirmation. Their all their information comes up in my calendar. Uh, 24 hours before they send out the calendar, people send out an email or a text message just confirming the time and date and everything. Um, I do the appointment. 24 hours later, they send out a uh, a little thing to request. I call it a request for a review. Um, mm -hmm. Like everything is sort of. And that way I don't forget because I get, you know, I get forgetful and I get distracted. I'm one guy working away here. Is that uh, automated? And, the, those I, emails? Yeah. Oh yeah. They're all automated. Once somebody books an appointment, it all goes through, you know, in 24 hours. And then if they don't respond to the review three days later, they send them another 
a follow-up, just say, hey, maybe you forgot. And um, so everything's done for me. And, and it just, it takes such pressure off me because all I have to do is shoot, you know, um, and somebody's picking up photos. Uh, usually we try and mail them out. It, you know, it saves me a little work. Um, but if they're picking up photos, everything just goes right into the, uh, right into the calendar. What uh, can I ask you? I, I know you talked about this a few years ago. The program you used, are you using the same program, or uh, I was using I was using the same program up until Monday, uh, yeah. and then they were bought out by another company. That in some well, no, I don't think the new company is as good as the old company. Um, I'm running into a few snags and things, but you know it, it's it, it's nice too because with the old company. You know, they would take care of the deposits and stuff. Like certain types of work I do, they just show up. Like we book an appointment, they show up, we do the shoot. Mm -hmm. um, with other things where I have to go on location, I want a credit card number up front. Right. And uh, they take care of all that. Really? Um, yeah. And uh, so cool. my, my little, um, my no-show uh, policy pops up. And in theory, they don't show up, they get charged. And again, that all goes on be behind the scenes i don't see that so again makes my job great and it, it it it's not awkward at all having to phone somebody up and say you didn't show up you owe me money it's all done automatically okay. so here's my issue with this and i'm only mostly playing the devil's advocate by bringing up this point the fact that you're losing that initial connection that one-on-one -on -one, which we don't automate any of that by the way just so you know and uh, when we book out our, all our pop-up wedding events, family events, and fairy day events, which are our biggest ones, uh, Tina um, gets 80% of them on the phone. And so I always felt that that connection was important. Now, maybe it's not. I mean, I, I'm, I like this idea of automating for many, many reasons, notwithstanding the follow-up process, which is Keep, and I agree, but you're in a much smaller town. Uh -huh. uh, I'm in Ottawa, which is a million people. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are working shift work. You would be surprised how many people book after hours, you know, right. and on Sundays and on Christmas Day when I'm not going to answer the phone. Um, my Tina, and I actually do have a Tina. Um, really? my, my, young, my youngest daughter is Tina, but she doesn't work for me. She has a real job. Um, <laughs> she... Um, but I, it's me. It, you're looking at you're looking at you know all the staff of Spencer Studio right here. Well, I have yeah. a spooky duck that I consider staff, but yeah. Um, and I don't. I mean, if I'm doing a shoot, I'm not going to stop the shoot to go answer a phone to see if I do passport photos. It's all online. And, and again, it, it's a different market. You're working in a smaller town. Everyone in town probably knows you very well. Not everyone in Ottawa knows me well. So mm -hmm. for me, it works well. This is a real sort of a high tech area, high tech in government. Yeah, uh, people are very familiar, and I get a lot of compliments. But it was so easy to book an appointment. Had it been any harder, I wouldn't have bothered. You know. Yes. And, and so for me, it works. For you, probably not. You know, well, it might. But I'm saying it might. Mm -hmm. I love the idea. I have I'm thinking it. of going to it myself because I have a, uh, a program called Studio Cloud that I use for all my accounting software and things mm -hmm. like that. And you can pay an upgrade for, I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something like that upgrade where they'll actually add the calendar to it. And then you can have people go and book through the calendar and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Are you, are you using that John now? Or for that I'm using, I've been using studio cloud for years, but I've never used the calendar part. So we're going to look at our bills right now to see what it is we're paying for on studio cloud and see if we'll take certain things that we're not using, take those upgrades off and put that on and, and then try it for a while and see how it works. So can I ask a question then, John? Sure. Uh, do you, on, on an average photography shoot, do you make more than $10? Yes. Well, you, you'd only have to gain one booking uh -huh. and it would, it would pay for it for the next six months or eight months or 10 months. Very true. Well, 10 bucks is nothing. Um, yeah. you, you know, it's just another stream of, of, you know, customers yep. coming to you. Yep. Cause we just added an e-commerce site to ours now for when we do our, school and grad pictures and we do the sports locally here in Petawawa and stuff and we've never had the e-commerce it's always been you call a credit card or you bring your form in person and pay in yep. person things like that. now that my web designer is actually 
hopefully finished it by this week, if not by next week, and we have our e-commerce where we'll just be able to send a link to them, say, here's where you go to book. It's got everything on there, all the products that we have. You pick what you want. It charges you right on the spot, and I just get an email of what you ordered. Well, let me ask, why wouldn't you deal with someplace, and there's a lot of them, there's photo bids and there's shoot proof and everything else that mm-hmm. do that. It's already done for you. Yep. I, I just um, I have a, a thing called Pixie Set that I like to use, yep. but I don't like some of the um, – the streams that they use when it comes to paint. Cause a lot of them are us companies too. So they're oh, yeah. all more us based this uh, I'm using Squarespace for my website and yeah. there is one embedded in there, but my web designer, we found another form that we can use that just works really nicely and seamlessly. And it has a little pay now button on my website that yeah. people can go That's there good. and it has all the different ones on there. And uh, it's the first time ever doing it. So it's going to be some growing pains, but uh, we'll see what works and what doesn't. But I agree with you. If I can automate a lot more, it would take a lot more stress off me. You know, uh, I don't show proofs. Uh, everything goes online, like everything. If someone, if we do a shoot and someone says, "Can I see?" I'm like, "No, it's online." And you know, later on today, uh, I use shoot proof, and I was through a couple of the other ones. And I like them, but you're right they uh, they have their own system. They have computer people setting up how the packages and everything are laid out, and they don't. I don't think they have photographers doing it, so they don't really do it our way. So you have to adapt a bit. But um, just the other day, I mean, I wake up in the morning and there's an order for me for, you know, two, three, four, five hundred dollars that I got while I was sleeping. Yep. Um, they take care of the payment. Um, I think I pay a flat, I think it's seventeen dollars a month um, and they do everything for me. They don't take a commission. Um, like I said, and it's it's beautifully laid out and, and well thought out and they have all kinds of anti copying you know, uh, watermarks and stuff and everything I need to sort of protect me and the payment, you have choices, but the payment goes right into my PayPal account. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it's just, like I said, it's just so, I'm one guy working away and if I can hire a company to do that, uh, I use um, another example of automation. I use uh, QuickBooks, okay? Uh-huh. Not automation, but I use the Square this little the little square thing. Yeah, Rob uses and, that. And people just sort of, you know, tap the credit card on it and it, it just yep. it syncs yeah. with QuickBooks and does all my paperwork. You know, it collects the taxes, puts it in my tax account, does all that stuff for me. I yeah. use another company um for receipts. So every time I go fill up the car with gas or get buy something from B and H or something, I just send them the receipt and again they do all the, the calculations and it automatically just goes to my QuickBooks. Um, I'm not an accountant. Uh, you know, I did marry one just like somebody else I know. But, um, uh, and it's just, it all gets done. And, and I'm, I just want to take pictures and talk to people. I don't want to be doing accounting. Uh, I don't want to be doing chasing people for money. Um, I just want to be taking, so I automate as much as I can. That's interesting. I love that. You just want to take pictures and that's, well, that's what I'm good at. And, uh, when it comes to, like I said, I'm dyslexic. You know, I remember one time doing it by hand and somebody bought something for 140 bucks and I was talking, I wasn't paying attention and I put through on their credit card, $1,400. So mm-hmm. better. It just, you know, it gets automated. It's right every time. Um, it just, you know, for somebody like me, it just, it it's, it's just too and like i said you know with this book the 80 20 rule um i want to spend my time doing what i want that's going to pay me the most um i, I don't want to be doing stuff i don't want to do and i find as i get older and lazier and fatter <laughs> that um you know i start cutting back on stuff you know like cutting back on yeah i don't want to photograph you know whatever there's such and such anymore um yeah. I just want to do what I want to do and I do well. So um, technically, if you wanted to, you could never leave the house. Um, well, I mean, we, we proved that the last two years, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> you know. It, it, Were you able to shoot one-on-one appointments during COVID or? No, I, I was shut down for at least a year and a half. Yeah. Just before Christmas, um, two weeks before Christmas, uh, Ontario decided, hey, uh, you know, Christmas is coming. Let's see if we can ruin it for everybody. Uh, uh-huh. So let's shut down for another month. So I had to contact nine families that we had scheduled for the, the two weeks before Christmas and cancel right. the ball. Um, yeah. So, 
um, yeah, um, they were sort of, you know how Ontario is, they, you know, they shut down for a month or two and then they'd be open for two weeks and shut down again. So yeah, I was yeah. able to book stuff, you know, for the, you know, but I was constantly having to apologize to people and say, sorry, we're going to have to reschedule a third time, a fourth time. Yeah. Um, Very frustrating. It is, but you know, like I said, it's worked out really well for me grad wise. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very happy about that. John had an interesting setup for sports. He had, this, or Santa pictures rather, he had a barrier. People walk in, they see Santa, and it was all shot COVID friendly. So it was pretty oh. fast. Yeah, we had to have a um, plexiglass shield between Santa and the kids when they were actually shooting the picture. Hmm. But we had yeah. to set our lights up in a way that you wouldn't see the reflection yeah. in the window. And people were commenting because there's two malls here in Pembroke area here. There's the West End, which I shoot Santa usually. And then there's the East End Plaza. And uh, we couldn't do it at ours because of they're doing renovations. So we had to do it in our studio this year. So we did the setup in here. And uh -huh. we shoot it. And people would look at the ones from the other mall and then look at ours and say, how come you can see their plexiglass? But in yours, it looks like there's no plexiglass there. And it's just a matter of knowing, knowing your equipment and what you can do with it. <laughs> Yep. But yep. that was the only way we could do it. The kids wore their masks. Santa wore his mask when they first walked in so they could talk. They stood two meters apart from each other talking. What's, what do you want for Christmas? How have you been? Then when he was ready for a photo, they sat in a little ottoman in front of the plexiglass. He was behind the plexiglass. They took their masks yep. off, and he was able to wave standing behind him. It was the only way we could do it. But, yeah, you had to think outside the box. And that's, you know, and that's true with this business. You you know, again, you know, or you go to the courses and everything, you learn about lighting and different things like that. But it's the creativity, right? And it's thinking outside the box that's going to, you know, make you or break you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it, it's, well, how can I put it? Um, it? It was Darwin who used to say that, you know, they used to say, well, it's survival of fittest. Actually, I think what he said was was more survival of the, of the creatures that could adapt. And, you know, guys, again, shooting weddings, you learn to be creative real quick. You learn, uh, no matter what the situation is, you have to get the shot. Um, yeah. So you end up uh, being real creative and thinking about it. But it's like that with marketing, too. Yeah. We've gone from, in Ottawa, having about 80 photographers listed in the yellow pages to now having, I don't know what, 15,000 people now calling themselves professionals. So yeah. um, you have to sort of market yourself in such a way that, you know, there's there's us and them, so that you have to be able to think all this and strat and and that's what I find. I spend so much time doing. I'm on the website, you know, tweaking this, fixing that, checking the price, doing this, constantly trying to outthink the competition. It used to be easy when there was eighty, but now you know. But I haven't had to start driving an Uber or anything yet, so I figure things are working. <laughs> I find it's exciting what you just said to do that because it's marketing and marketing requires innovation thinking. And I've always felt that, especially back in the nineties when they started taking marketing really, really serious in part when I got married and my wife quit her job, I had these obligations, but I loved it. And uh, to me, it was like what, <clears throat> what you just said. And I think, and feel that most people, especially the newbies on the market, don't understand this, is that it's a superpower. It's a, the secret sauce, so to speak. I'm willing to put in the work, carry the cross, climb the mountain, do the work I need to do, think, 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 innovate, 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 come up with creative solutions. Yeah, but I mean, you that's what I was saying earlier, though, Rob. You yeah. know, it, it, you come up with all this, you do all the work, and you think and everything. And then yep. within an hour, six other photographers in your region have stolen it word for word for. I, I, there's a guy locally yeah. who's done that. I don't um, worry about that. Shit. I know, like but that's, that's you're crazy. Yeah, you're crazy. I keep all that stuff real close. I mean, I have yeah. an amazing tagline that I want to use. It, it just it's super. I, it's just it's. But I'm not putting it on the website because I know that you know within an hour, six other photographers mm -hmm. are going to be stealing it. Uh, Tell it to me now. I want to steal it. No, I'm not telling. <laughs> but uh, you know, I I read a lot of marketing stuff, and not just photography marketing, but I mean mm -hmm. other, you know, um, totally unrelated, you know, and that's good. You can learn a lot from, I don't know, how lawyers market, how 
you market, I don't know, your fish market or something. Um, yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, I, I went, you're talking about the 90s. Back in the 90s, I went back to night school at Algonquin College here for four years uh, studying marketing. And uh, I came to the conclusion that marketing and photography are very similar in that there's a certain amount of creativity and a certain amount of analytical ability needed. And it's that blend, which is the same in photography and it's mm -hmm. the same in marketing. That's, yeah, that's probably why people like you and I excel at it because it's a system we recognize. Yeah, you have to recognize it and be willing to uh, run with it. So, so your, uh, your studio is pretty small. You still in the same place? Small. Same place. It's... Uh, I think I'm doing this from memory, but it's like nine feet wide and 22 feet long. So I'm really limited when it comes to, uh, you know, doing big families and everything. And I'm always get je I'm always jealous when I look at Instagram and I see mm -hmm. your photos with all the space and, you know, and everything like this. So I do stuff that, uh, I mean, I can do full lengths. I charge, I think I charge, uh, I don't know, an extra $200 for it. <laughs> so basically I just do waste up stuff, whether it be grads or headshots and stuff, because right. I can do a full length, but the studio is carpeted, which means no high heels are going to poke through my, my background. So I have right. to put down a, a couple of sheets of masonite as a floor. Um, so it, it's more work for me. And, and uh, like I said, I'm old and lazy. So I'll just so you make it, it work. You make it work. Yeah. So I just, you know, I find I just, it's easy. I find it's easy to discourage people from full length when yeah, they well, won't say yeah. yeah. I, I, they say, "Well, I'm going to need my shoes." I say, "You know what? This week we're only doing shoes. It's not a <laughs> thing. You don't even need a jacket. Just we're just doing shoes." You know? so, like I try and toes are painted. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. So but, you know, it, it was like one of the problems I had. This was it was. I used to have a problem because I've always had a small studio or the height wasn't right or something. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you have people with glasses, you know, you have to get sort of a higher angle and get them to tip their head ever. So you can probably see it in my glasses there. So you get this, you go like this, you get a higher right. angle, it disappears. Right. And I just, you know, I couldn't do it because my, my, the ceiling was too low. So I fixed that. I got a lower stool. <laughs> it cost me like less than $20 problem solved. How tall yeah. is your ceiling? I'm sorry, I missed that. How tall is your ceiling in your studio? Um, it's about, I, I'd say seven feet where I am, and then I guess eight feet where the people are. Like, right. I have a drop people. ceiling at one point, and uh, so it limits my lighting and stuff. But yeah. you know, you work around it. Well. Okay, but I'm going to I'm going to speculate here that the majority of your work is uh, head and shoulders, which is headshots and uh, um, yeah, typically uh, thighs up, waist up, you know that sort of thing. Um, typically, we do mostly heads because it's you know most a lot of the work I do is for websites. Uh, yeah. if, I, if I do grad photos, it's you know for eight by tens, five by sevens, or whatever for grandma. So, but That's, yeah, uh, as, you, as you can see, very small. That's your studio there with Very the small, small nine feet there. wide, the fake brick wall on the left, reflector, you know, um, you know, I got one of the Manfrotto background systems where I crank down different backgrounds, but usually it's just a blue muslin for uh, uh, a muslin for most things, but I've got, you know, gray and white and, um, and now I have a, um, an office background. So I do your headshots because again, people were working from home. I can do mm -hmm. headshots here where it looks like you're in your office. I think I've seen that on your website. On your I gotta, yeah. I got to put up more photos of that because uh, it, it's a real, it sells well. I, thought well, maybe I shouldn't that say that. I don't want my competitors now. To, everyone's going to run it and get one. <laughs> I thought maybe that was a uh, uh, green screen. I, I, I was using a green screen for a while. I still offer it. Uh, I charge a lot more for it because I have to set it up. Um, mm -hmm. and, and anything you can do on a green screen for me anyways, I can do on a white background even mm -hmm. better because yeah. um, it, it, 
if unless you're actually going to strip them out and put them onto a different background, um, mm. nobody wants to picture themselves against a green background, not not a flat green background, anyways. Yeah. You know. So what's uh, what's the future like for you then? Do you have any plans yeah. for down the road and or retirement and or just keep going until you can keep going? And, well, you know, I, I was maybe heading down to Costa Rica and sort of you know move in with a friend of mine. Um, <laughs> as long as you don't mind scorpions and spiders. Oh, it doesn't bother me. Um, monkeys flying you know, around all over the place. <laughs> but then you have you have to run it through this lady here. That's well, Tina right there. The real she's, boss. She's talking to Rosa in our uh, our uh, property man. Wave to the camera, ladies. You know, <laughs> I'm just noticing. You know, when you look at uh, at this gallery page here. Um, all the uh, all the different, I'll say, religions and and faces, and you know, somebody from Ghana. Um, you know, we have Arab. Uh, you know, with the hijab, and it's it, it's incredible in Ottawa. We get so much diversity, mm -hmm. and uh, I try and show them on the website, um, mm -hmm. and I think that helps a lot too. You know what I've been yeah, getting yeah. recently? I got to tell you what I've been getting: uh, a lot of autistic kids. And when I say right. a lot, I don't mean a lot. I mean uh, more than I would have thought. And I'm really? saying, well, why, why am I getting, you know, and we have, again, we have a good time. We laugh and fool around and everything. Um, and I thought, you know, it, I, I assume it's a very small community. And I guess someone says, you know, I'd love to get pictures of my son, but, you know, he's autistic and, you know, it's a little more difficult. And then somebody will say, oh, I had Robin do the pictures of my son. They came out great. And all of a sudden, you know, small community, weird travels. Yep. Um, another market, you know. Yep. So what we, we have Ottawa University here. We get a lot of international students and stuff, too. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me come and see you. You're a pansexual, transgender, middle-aged. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Ryan, you're looking like. <laughs> but see, I find that too. Like, I know a lot of the schools, if you get some of the big name school companies, I'm not going to mention their names, but the ones that go in and do all the school portraits yeah. and that, there's like the three or four main ones. They're always doing the green and blue screen. And then they, on the website, which backdrop do you want? And I've never been a fan. I have, like, right now, this is my green screen right now. You wouldn't even tell. You think I'm sitting in my studio right now, which is on the other side of that wall. But, um, for video, I don't mind it. I hate shooting against green screen. I don't like it because if you don't do it right, then you got to decontaminate hair yep. and things like I'm like you. I shoot the white or black. But when I do the um, grad photos, if I do school portraits, things like mm -hmm. that, I sh I have an actual muslin that's a nice gray, white, marble type look mm -hmm. that I tell everybody this is the one I use. And when I do school portraits, I have another one. It's a pop-up one that has one color on one side, one the other. And I say, you choose between these three. Which one do you want? And then when they show up to their shoot, I've already got that backdrop up ready to go. And that's what I shoot you on. And that's what your pictures are. It's no green screen. And then you pick the backdrop later on. I find that it's just yeah. it's more complicated. People just yeah. want them shot and have nice pictures. Yeah, they don't the same. I don't even give them a choice. Yep, I mean, they come in and, and we do two different backgrounds, this and that. Yep. Done. And I've never... I, one time I had someone say, well, you know, can you get a brown background? So, I, you know, I have a pop-up as well, five-by-seven pop-up, and you just mm -hmm. sort of slide it in. Same with my brick wall. Uh, I, saw, I I get people coming in. Um, you know how it is, that small world, eh, and they all sort of text each other. Um, I've been getting a lot of people in who with degrees in criminology. So when one, the first one came in, I said, hey, I can put up the brick wall and just sort of you can tell people that you took pictures in prison you graduated and, and you know um and then all of a sudden i you know i get a whole bunch of criminologists or engineers or different you know like i say, we just we have a lot of fun and you do you're funny man i, I do it, it just and it's and it was nice during the pandemic you know because you lose all your social contacts zoom's not the same and so i i'm able to get people in and we laugh and we fool around and it's nice to have that that social uh, connection Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it it helps me on many levels. Like I said, though, they don't teach you the, the real important stuff. They don't teach you that in, nope. in photography school. You know, nope. it's people. I get a lot of students that come to me and saying, yeah, I'm looking at going to college for photography. What do you recommend? Where do you think I go? I said, well, to tell you the truth, I think you should go to a business class. Don't go yep. for photography. You can learn photography. But mm -hmm. uh, 
go get a business degree because that'll help you keep your business going. So true. You know, and the people I've known that have been in business for a long, long time, like Rob, um, are the ones who are obsessed with business and marketing and sales. And, you know, like you said, you know, you have to be able to take photos that are really good, Mm -hmm. but to stay in business and to get you through the slumps, you know, and the downtimes and, and all that you need to have good, uh, grasp on business and dealing with people, uh-huh. you know, innovate, innovate, innovate. Yeah. Well, yeah. But you know what? People like you, they'll buy from you. If they don't like you, they don't buy from you. Yep. This is so, yeah. true. so back, you gotta, back to the core concept again. Yep. And the more you give, the more you're going to get back too. That's I'm part Very of a business good. group and that's our business slogan is givers gain. If I give business to this person, they're going to want to give business back to me. So yep. uh, the more you give it, it comes back twofold. Yep. It really does. And, and you build in, I remember reading this years ago and I don't do it for this, but when you do something extra special for somebody, it definitely comes, they feel obligated that, you know, you've done something nice for them. They feel obligated to reciprocate. Um, it, it, it just, I mean, we can all use that, especially now, you know, the way the world is and the, mm-hmm this continent is, you know, just be nice. That, that concept's from that famous marketing book that came out in the 80s that wasn't supposed to be a marketing book. Do you remember that? Which it's one? Called, are you it's called the rep, 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 reciprocity uh, principle. <laughs> it's what, <laughs> reciprocity? You know, when you, yeah, thank you. When you give something to somebody, they feel obligated subconsciously. I don't, don't know that one. Maybe yeah, I, do. yeah. I, I don't recall the title. I'm pretty sure you're gonna, you, you might have heard and or have read this book, and it's just escape. It's very, very famous. It was this psychologist, PhD guy who did all these studies, not thinking it was going to get picked up by the marketing world, which it did. And um, so everything pivoted for him. But, uh, but, anyways, as we wind down, which we're doing now, we got a few more minutes left. I want to ask you some quirky, fun, irreverent questions. And, uh, <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, John, if you have any questions, you feel free to go ahead. But uh, the first one I want to ask you, it's, it's not that quirky. It's more, uh, it's a legit question. What would you tell, what would, uh, however old Robin is today, what would that guy tell 22-year-old Robin? If you um, gee, good question. What would I tell myself 22? Uh, you know what? And, and this goes back, and I think about this, and you've heard it from your mom, thousand times and you ignore it but it's be yourself you know don't try and live up to what you think photographers should be doing or acting the way photographers should act um be yourself you know and, and that's like one of the hardest things ever you mm-hmm. know it's so simple your mom's tell you that but that over the last we'll say five years or so uh just going in with no agenda just being fun and and if you're fun be fun if you're you know a jerk be a jerk i guess but um just be yourself this is interesting why is that important now looking back were you not being yourself back then i mean it's hard when you're young and in your 20s it's that's a hard concept to grasp no no it, no it, it's uh we're always trying like I say, you know, photographers, the, the whole problem with us is we're copiers. We copy everything. I was always trying to be something I wasn't, right. you know, and uh, it just sometimes it didn't work out. And other times, you know, it got me in trouble a few times. Um, right. You know, just just relax, be yourself. And I guess the other major thing was that uh, things usually work out. You know, I mean, uh, between you and me, don't tell John, but, you know, I mean, uh, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, you hit a bad time, you start thinking, well, let's end it all, you know. But and I do find that uh, that your whole uh, your whole life goes up and down, up and down. And if you get to that bottom thing where you think, you know what, taking the easy way out, if you can just hang on, all of a sudden mm-hmm. things better, you know. Yep. So relax. That sounds, that sounds pretty dark, like as if you're almost talking about ending one's life. Or you might have just been ending the career and going into something else. Well, you know what, though? If you do end your life, it does end your career. That's true. <laughs> but oh, Since you brought that up, uh, it reminds me of one of your strategies, which was uh, don't have a plan B. So, Yes. You know, and I, I find that, especially with young people, and uh, 
I, I'm getting to the age where I think if you screwed up, it's probably your parents' fault. But um, I, 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 I was I was going to say getting a haircut, but I was getting my beard trimmed the other day, and it was a young guy. He said he was 17, working part time as a barber in a well known barber shop here, right. um, trimming my my. You know, he was talking about his plan was I'm going to you know as I get older I'm going to open my own barber shop and I got this and this plans and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, then he said he was he was off to university uh, as soon as he graduates high school. I saw the eyes said uh, taking business. He said no, taking engineering. I said what? Why? He said, well, you know, I want to be a barber. My father really thinks I should be an engineer, so I'll have something to fall back on. Oh. Um, and you know what? And I heard somebody say it the other day. I wish I could take credit for it, but they said your plan B will always become your plan. That's a good one. When, when you're uh, and if you're a photographer and things are not going well, then get better. You know, if, if you don't know, get smarter, get marketing better, take better photos. Uh, don't start driving an Uber, <laughs> you know, because it's, you know, it's too easy to sort of split your interests. Yep. Yeah. You know, so plan, yeah, plan B's. And I don't, honest to God, I don't have a plan B. If uh, something happens and digital photography is outlawed or something, I go nowhere. I mean, I've got nothing to fall back on. And so it makes me hustle harder, makes me try harder to deal with the customers, makes me do better photos, mm -hmm. uh, harder with my money. Um, it just, there was a thing I was reading a while back, and I think it was in Asia. I think it was in China or something. Somebody invaded, some general or admiral invaded an island. And the first thing he did was he said, okay, to his men, burn the ships so right. you either sink or swim you if you don't we don't win this battle you're not going home yeah great motivator and, and that's because there is no plan b it's not like eh, we don't win we'll just take the ships home no Good plan home. b you better yeah. get serious i've always felt in a similar vein that uh i call it golden handcuffs when you go for the secure job that's guaranteed yeah almost without a fail maybe 100% or near 100% that people that I've known who are in that situation, they seem to talk about their uh, situation with regret. Yeah, yeah, I worked for 30 years, I got a pension, but damn, I hated my job. Yeah, so. yeah, and that's hard. You know, when I talk to uh, high school kids, uh, I tell them, <laughs> I say, you know what, when you work for yourself, you have your own business, you just be prepared for the hard work. And I say, mm -hmm. nah, it's not true. It's easy. With piece of I say, you know what hard work is? You know what's hard? Going to work for a job that, that you don't like, working for a boss who's an ass, having somebody in your office that just sucks the life out of you, yep. working for mm -hmm. yourself is a piece of cake. You don't want to work Mondays? You don't work Mondays. You want long weekends every second week? You take them. You want to take January off? You, take, you don't have to check with it. I mean, yeah, it costs you because, you know. But yep. if you do it wisely, you're the boss. You call the shots. So if, if you're working for yourself and you don't like your life, you have no one to blame but yourself. No, nope. that's scary. That's scary. Uh, in the, what you're saying there is in this, in essence, that the responsibility is all on your shoulders. Always, yep. you know. And you said I, something a minute ago that most of the problems you feel with kids these days, you, you can all uh, almost always go back to the parents. I thought that was interesting. Well, you know, parents have the best of uh, your best interests at heart. Yeah. But they're the ones to push you to get a plan B. You know, yeah. they're the ones to push you to get a job, something safe. You know, I mean, they all say, you know, I want you to live your dreams. But when it comes right down to it, you know, no. your, your dream is to, you know, form a band and go on the road. And the parents say, yeah, you should be an accountant. You know, yeah. it's steady work. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, well, I mean, I'm sure you guys had problems with the in-laws like being a photographer was never viewed by my in-laws as a real job and every yeah. time for, for years every time i'd see them robin got a job yet i said hey, i made 2500 bucks yesterday i don't want a job <laughs> you know um you don't say that but you're thinking it. <laughs> no i said it you did it <laughs> yeah and then when i started taking my life on nice trips and because you know there could be a lot of uh with weddings and stuff there could be a lot of yeah. money coming in right so i was right. very 
I think I was very extravagant, you know, with my wife, took her to Paris for her birthday and things like that. And, and then you start winning all these awards and, and the uh, in-laws shut up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, uh, I never had that issue because I was 35 when I got married. And by that time, I was established. And, and, and oh, that's good. It was pretty obvious. But I remember when, uh, when I was much younger, my girlfriend's mom was like, asking her, what, what do I do for a living? And she was like, oh, that's no way to make a living. I always remember that. So. No respect at all, as they say. No respect. <laughs> well, on that note, we'll let you go. And uh, we're going to have a closing a closing uh, video. On college? 10 seconds. But stick around. We'd like to talk to you off, okay. uh, off camera if you got five minutes or so sure. to do that. Any closing questions, uh, Johnny, or? No, I was just absorbing everything as a sponge because uh, uh, there's a lot of gold stuff there that I can pick up too because here in Petawawa, Pembroke area, we have the other Algonquin College here too that I do some of the grad photos from that too for their nursing program and that. So a lot of what mm -hmm. he's talking about is the same thing with me. My studio went pretty busy also because of grad photos and on how many schools you get where people call you, they're not happy with their school pictures of their kids. So they yeah, want to the studio yeah. Yeah, so, that's what I that's what I was counting on for years. Like, yep. you know, mom's just not happy with the photos or the kid missed it or the kid was sick, but it's the covid that just shocked the hell out of me, you know, how much business I was getting because of that. Yep. Nice. Well, keep so, it going. I did a lot of it to touch the base, so I mean, I was just Good absorbing time. like a sponge. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been awesome, Rob. I really appreciate you coming on board. So. Anytime. Thank you for sure. still look like Rob Reiner, more handsome version of him, though. Younger, more handsome. <laughs> All right.